Over which you have uh, no voice except you have graphics that's saying, hey, uh, this time around uh, this, this iJobs program is spent a lot of money. Uh, we have no jobs to show for it. It's extremely expensive. We have a $900 million in debt that's going to actually cost the taxpayers $1.7 billion. And we've, we have very little to show for this expenditure so far. The uh, Culver administration uh, has responded saying, hey, uh, you guys are making fun of the uh, flood victims. That's bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> the, when iJobs passed in 2009, Chet Culver touted this as this big job program is going to create 30,000 jobs. The truth is there are less jobs today than there was at the time it passed. In fact, there are even less construction jobs now than there was a year ago in 2009. And, and in fact, Iowans are going to have to pay this back with interest over the next 23 years. Money that would have gone for infrastructure is now going to go to pay interest. It's been a colossal failure. Dave Price on WHO-TV has spent the last, I think, four or five months trying to track down and get information about this. He's not been able to get information. They're not able to show there's been any permanent jobs created. There may be a few construction jobs created on public projects, but the fact is this is not the way you build a strong economy and bring business and jobs to the state of Iowa. In fact, by mortgaging the future and taking money away that could have been used on infrastructure, it's going to hurt our chances of attracting private sector jobs and a growing economy in the future. So it's been a colossal failure, and we're just pointing out the facts. The uh, Culver administration says uh, this money, $875 million, is now going to be targeting flood mitigation. Well, it's it, not that, being used it, for that purpose alone. It's being used for all kinds of different what, projects all over the state. That's not what they sold it on. It's all of a sudden now because we have had some flooding recently that he's doing a bait and switch and saying, but the whole name was iJobs, and it's supposed to say it's going to create all these kind of jobs. The truth of the matter is they haven't. They haven't delivered what they said they would, and it was wrongheaded in the first place. The idea that government, by borrowing money, is going to be able to create a whole bunch of jobs is not worked. It's never worked, and is what it's done is just created a bunch of debt that we as taxpayers are going to have to pay back with interest over the next 23 years. What do you think about the—we've the, uh, had an, uh, a couple of summers in a row. We've had flooding and unusual weather, and uh, now we have a dam— uh, uh, a break over in the eastern Iowa, the uh, Delhi area over there, uh, uh, and and it looks like one of the townships is uh, not going to be covered by. They, they refuse to to buy uh, flood insurance, and they say, "Whoops, that's come back to bite us." Now, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, my heart goes out to the people that are affected by the flooding or the disasters, and and I dealt with that when I was governor before. We had the flood of 93, and you remember losing the waterworks here in Des Moines yeah, absolutely. and all those challenges. And we've seen it with our farmers and many people that have been impacted. So, And I think it's important for government to respond, but also there are rules and regulations as to what qualifies for FEMA and these sorts of things. So uh, I think it's going to have to be something to be worked out. Hopefully, uh, uh, and, and, and it is a private lake. Consequently, it's a little different than a natural lake. And so I think it's going to have to be a public-private partnership between the association and the people that own property and also the public entities, including the county, the state, and the federal government. And uh, it's, I don't know what the answer is, but I think we need to carefully review and look at what is the best strategy to try to deal with it. Most importantly, we, first of all, we're fortunate there weren't any loss of life. That's the most important thing. There's a lot of property loss, and certainly we need to do what we can. Uh, governments at all levels need to work together with the, with the landowners and the private sector to determine what's the best solution to deal with this situation. And according to some of the news accounts, uh, the, that dam, uh, it joins another, uh, uh, is on a list of a bunch of other dams that have been rated as being suspect as far as quality in our infrastructure and dam repair has not kept pace. Uh, th this one was not rated as being unsafe. It just got overwhelmed by, by flood water. But there are other dams 
that are are listed by the reporting agencies as in, 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 in need of repair. And we've got dozens and dozens and dozens of those around the state of Iowa uh, that have been apparently neglected. Well, what do well, we do about that? Well, it's very similar to the situation with bridges. You remember when the bridge collapsed up in the, collapsed up in the Twin Cities? Yes. And, and, and so uh, I think what you've got to do is, is uh, uh, carefully review and determine what the needs are and but sometimes your predictability and just like this one they didn't necessarily realize that this one was in danger of breaching but but it was so much rain that it that it was overwhelmed and as i understand there was no emergency spillway in this particular situation so i think it's important to to look at this in a very thoughtful way and determine what's the best way to deal with these kind of situations and unfortunately there's a tendency in government to always react after the fact as opposed to being more strategic in looking at and resolving these things over the long term. Back to the eye jobs uh, issue just for a second just out of curiosity because I don't know how this works uh, that money apparently now uh, Chet Culver intends to use for flood repair mitigation is, well, some of it, is it's already been committed. Is that, been, is that legal to use borrowed money that was designed for one purpose for another purpose? Well, as I understand what they did, they went out and borrowed all this money, and then they just sought uh, from local governments their ideas on how to spend it. Now, that is not the best use of tax money, in my opinion. You ought to do strategic planning and, right. and then set up a list of priorities and do those things that are the most important first. All right, just the, the technical part of that, Dave Ott, is it legal to, uh, to direct money for, that is designed for one purpose to, to uh, short-term expenditures like flood relief? Uh, obviously, I'm not an attorney, so I can't give you a legal interpretation, but the real key is that we want to make sure that whatever we do, we are open and transparent with the taxpayers. And I think in this case, it was very unclear exactly how they were going to spend this money. They were looking for ways, and I think now they are trying to look at some of the flood Well, mitigation. there's obviously a need, but I'm just wondering about the legality. Yeah, it would be best answered by our attorney general. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, what, do we, what could we expect out of that? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. The Attorney General obviously has one of his staff people on leave running Culver's campaign. Another one was running the liquor department, and we know what's happened there. Uh, and no, I don't know what happened. Well, there. well, Des Moines Register had a big expose about how they misspent money, and and, and oh, the, on, the, on, the on, auditor yes, okay. actually, if you want to have the details, I think the auditor's office did a well, actually, complete that, audit and pointed out they had spent money that wasn't authorized. They'd used resources inappropriately and and the director is now gone but for a year and a half the governor and the attorney general knew it and did nothing about it yeah but that's one of the few government programs actually making money <laughs> well Maybe too much money they are spending it on uh, on furnishings and leather chairs well and and, and uh, one of the <laughs> reasons bicycles why and what? flat screens but hey they're making money jan let me tell you why they're making money people are their their departments driving people to drink <laughs> <laughs> well the state of all of iowa since prohibition ended has been a control state that it used to be the state was in the retail liquor business and when i was governor we actually saved the taxpayers a lot of money by getting out of the retail liquor business the state is still the wholesaler and so they all have to get their liquor from the state but and the state buys it in big quantities but we don't have the cost now of having state employees running liquor stores all over the state. We don't have the state liquor stores that we're leasing, and we don't have state employees delivering liquor. So this was a big improvement, and that's the reason why the state's making more money, because we eliminated a lot of the overhead and a lot of the cost and run it more efficiently. We need to look at other things we can do, other changes we can make, like that one, which we did back in 1986, to make state government more efficient and to eliminate those things that government doesn't need to be doing so that we can use less of the taxpayers money and and be in a stronger fiscal position but certainly misusing money that came in is wrong and uh, that should never have been permitted uh, oversight uh, department of management recognized that a year and a half before anything was done with it uh, that person should have been fired in immediate Lee, when that information came, uh, came, uh, became aware, I, and and I think uh, the executive council has the authority to do that, and the governor is a member of the executive council, and and that action should have been taken, and it wasn't, and that's not the only example 
of where state government has been mismanaged or has wasted taxpayers' money. And I just think that we need to restore a clean, honest, open, and, and transparent government in this state. Uh, my in-studio guests are Governor Branstad and uh, State Auditor Dave Vaught. When we come back after our farm markets, we'll reconvene the conversation. We'll open the phone lines and take uh, as many calls as we can from listeners. Other issues to discuss as well. The immigration issue it got the uh, governor a lot of press a couple of weeks ago. I'll have him revisit some of that. And you're welcome to participate right here on 1040 WHO Radio. Wednesday's estimated.